all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. In metal, the atoms form particular patterns. They may create, for instance, cubic or hexagonal structures. In three-dimensional space, they could look something like this. Note that additional atoms can be found in the middle or faces of the structure. Structures, in turn, form clusters called crystals or grains. All the atoms in the crystals have the same arrangement. These crystals possess certain characteristics. They may be strong, but brittle, that is, lacking in ductility. Or, they may be ductile, able to be easily formed, but not strong. Or any degree of either. They may also possess other unique characteristics, but taken by themselves, pure metal crystals rarely have the exact combination of properties required for a certain part's operation in the engine. To get these properties, a number of things can be done. For one, other materials, called alloying elements, can be added to the original metal. It can also be heat treated, and it can be bent, stretched, or compacted. All of these distort the structure of the crystals and consequently change the properties of the metal. Take this piece of aluminum. If we greatly magnify its surface, we can see the small multicolored crystals that make it up. Here they are so irregular in shape because they have interfered with each other during growth. Magnified even further, we can see the actual atoms that make up the crystals shown in this simulation. In this case, the atoms have formed themselves into cubes. In reality, in addition to the four atoms at the corners, there is also an atom in the center of each side of the cube. Because of this structure, the metal has certain desirable qualities, such as rust resistance and light weight but it is not as strong as it needs to be for use in the engine. The reason a given metal like this one lacks strength is because sheets of the atomic structures that make it up tend to slip across one another, causing the metal to give. To make this material more useful, something must be done to hinder this slippage. One way to do this is by introducing another material, or alloying element. This happens when both are in a liquid state, and atoms of both materials can mingle freely. In this case, 3% copper, seen here in green, has been added to 97% of the aluminum. When slowly cooled to a solid once again, atoms of the copper alloy gather into large clumps. These atoms are of a different size than those of the original material. Consequently, a distortion is created in the original crystal structure. This makes it stronger by making it harder for the atoms to slip across one another. Once alloying has occurred, the metal can be heated to a high temperature, though below its melting point. When this is done, the chunks of alloying material tend to break up and dissolve. When cooled rapidly and then aged, smaller chunks form 
which are dispersed more evenly through the original material. Now, instead of having a few blockages made up of large clumps of alloy atoms, there are many more blockages made up of smaller clumps. This interferes with more areas of slippage, making the material still stronger. Still another way in which strength properties can be improved is by physically deforming the material. Scattered throughout the metal are places where there are no atoms, either individual vacancies or entire planes. These empty spaces enable the atoms to slip across each other more easily, making the metal much weaker. When it is deformed, however, atoms are forced into these places. Here, the metal is being squeezed laterally. Deformation techniques include elongating the metal to make billets or wire, rolling it into discs or sheets, and forcing it into different shapes by a variety of methods. All of these can help eliminate vacancies, hindering atomic slippage. If other properties can be produced by variations on these processes. Greater ductility always means lower strength, so it can be acquired by simply applying these processes in lesser degrees, or in some cases, reversing the processes. Other characteristics, such as erosion or heat resistance, can also be achieved with different types or amounts of alloying elements or different heat treating techniques. Above all, the metals must be strong, strong in many ways. They must have yield strength, able to endure large forces without permanently changing shape, sometimes for long periods of time. Ultimate strength, to withstand enormous overall strain without breaking apart. Creep strength, to prevent fracture after continually and gradually changing shape as time goes by. They must be resistant to impact, suddenly applied shocks, such as when a large hailstone or piece of debris, or as in this case, a bird, sucked in can suddenly shock it. Materials must not break when subjected to fatigue caused by repeated vibrations too small to create any permanent deformation or cause immediate fracture. They must be ductile, able to be bent and formed without snapping. This improved strength is acquired by disrupting the ability of planes of atoms to slip over one another, causing the metal to give. Clumps of different sized atoms are pushed in to block it. These clumps are broken up and distributed more widely by heating the material and dissolving the alloying element, then aging it in order to create many more blockages. Empty spaces into which planes of atoms can slip are decreased by jamming atoms into them with pressure created by certain deformation processes. All this creates metals with greater usefulness, metals capable of meeting the increasing challenges of today's complex technology.